New charges against the alleged Delphi murderer, who prosecutors say is responsible for the brutal murders of two Indiana teens nearly seven years ago. Prosecutors filed this request the same day as the Indiana Supreme Court made a major ruling in the case. When the prosecution goes into a trial, they want to cover all their bases. And by including the murder counts for intentional, the murder counts for felony murder, and the underlying kidnapping, it really protects them. We've been following the case of Richard Allen long before his arrest in October 2022. The crime itself dates back to February 14, 2017, when 13-year-old Abigail Williams and her friend, 14-year-old Liberty German, went missing in the small Hoosier town of Delphi. The girls had been hiking along a bridge and trail in the area, and the next day their bodies were recovered nearby. Years went by before an arrest was made, the public only being shown a composite drawing of a potential suspect and the so-called down the hill video taken by one of the girls before her death. But then on October 28th, 2022, officials announced the arrest of Richard Allen. Today is not a day to celebrate, but the arrest of Richard M. Allen of Delphi on two counts of murder is sure a major step in leading to the conclusion of this long-term and complex investigation. According to a probable cause affidavit released later, Allen was interviewed by police years before his arrest and even admitted he'd been near the crime scene the day of the murders. What's more, a bullet found just feet from the girl's lifeless bodies was a match to a weapon registered to Allen. Witnesses who were along the trail that day described seeing a man who was muddy and bloody, wearing an outfit similar to that shown in the Snapchat video. Investigators believe that man is Richard Allen. A step in the right direction. It's, it's concerning that it, he's a local guy. Um, so I think just a, a different emotions. Um, again, this is a step in the right direction. This is the first step into getting into court and, and having a trial. But since his arrest in 2022, Allen's case still hasn't made it to trial. He was charged with two counts of murder and pleaded not guilty to both. Days later, he was appointed two public defenders, Andrew Baldwin and Anthony Rosie. Their involvement in the case was a topic of conversation at the Supreme Court hearing just this week. I want Mr. Baldwin and Mr. Rosie to continue to represent me until this case is resolved one way or the other. Baldwin and Rosie were pulled from Allen's case in October this year after special judge Francis Gull called their actions grossly negligent. This came after a former employee at Baldwin's law firm admitted to taking photos of crime scene pics without Baldwin's knowledge. That person is now facing criminal charges. At a Supreme Court hearing on Thursday, Mark Lehman spoke on behalf of Allen, requesting three key points that Rosie and Baldwin be reinstated as Allen's attorneys, that Judge Gull be removed from the case, and that the case head to trial within 70 days. The relief that Mr. Allen wants is he wants attorneys Baldwin and Rosie on the case, and he wanted a speedy trial. And in order to show that that's an intimate part of the trial tactics and decisions that were going on was to present that to the court and make sure that this court had an opportunity to rule on it if it wanted to do Does so. Does your argument depend on our having found that the trial court's underlying findings of gross negligence and incompetence were wrong? No. I, I, well, if she's right about those findings, why isn't that, why isn't the relief that she ordered appropriate? First, Justice Slaughter, she's not right about those findings. Second, there isn't a record to even substantiate those findings. But third, those well, issues but, but, but don't maybe if involve... There's, if, there's not a, if there's not a record, maybe then the findings aren't yeah. proper. But yeah. if the findings are correct, why, why doesn't what, what she did follow from those findings? Because the attorney, excuse me, the client has the autonomy to choose the direction of his representation. And the, if he is aware that there may have been some sort of violation or the judge feels that there's a violation, he is allowed to waive hit that concern and to proceed forward with the lawyers of, that well, he has developed wait, wait, a relationship. Concern, Lehman argued it's Richard Allen's choice who represents him. This is more than just the choice of counsel case. Like this is an interference of counsel. This is, and this is the right to counsel itself because the right to counsel is meaningless. If a judge can say, stop all work. I know you've got a relationship going on. Stop it all till you come to my chambers and then says, you're off the case, whether we go into the courtroom or you stay in here, you're off the a case. Lot of
Indiana Supreme Court justices even heard a letter penned by Allen himself begging for Baldwin and Rosie's representation. On October 11, 2023, Rick Allen filed the following. Dear Judge Galt, please accept this letter as confirmation that I have communicated with my attorney, Bradley Rosie, regarding the circumstances regarding the leaking of sensitive information in this case. I am aware that the images of crime scene photos and other related documents were taken by a friend and former employee of Attorney Baldwin at Attorney Baldwin's office. I have discussed with Attorney Rosie the potential impact that the distribution of these documents could have on my defense. Attorney Rosie has also communicated with me that the prosecutor has requested that the attorney be disqualified from representing me in this case. I do not want this to happen. I want Mr. Baldwin and Mr. Rosie to continue to represent me until this case is resolved one way or the other. The Indiana Supreme Court ultimately ruled in Allen's favor, agreeing Baldwin and Rosie will represent him. Long crime legal analyst Julie Rendelman says that decision, paired with Allen's letter, means there's a slim chance for future arguments about counsel. The Supreme Court made clear in their decision that Richard Allen has a right to decide uh, the defense attorneys that he wants to represent him um, and that there's really no reason why they shouldn't be permitted to do so. Now, keep in mind, one of the interesting things is that at the end of the day, it's going to be hard pressed if Richard Allen loses the case, that he's suddenly going to say that he had ineffective assistance of counsel. Uh, because remember, he's the one who chose them. So if they continue to make some of the mistakes they made that got them taken off in the first place, uh, it's going to put him in a hard position appellate-wise. That was going to be one of my follow-up questions because I watched part of the hearing yesterday and the justices were addressing this if there was an appeal in the future. But it sounds like that likely would be thrown out because Richard Allen has doubled or tripled down saying, I want these attorneys to represent me. It will be more difficult for Richard Allen to claim at the end of the day, if he loses the case, uh, that his attorneys were ineffective or that he didn't want them in the first place. Because as you indicated, he's doubled down and said, these are the attorneys that I want, despite any mistakes that have made in, have been made by them in the past. Um, it doesn't give them carte blanche to be reckless throughout the trial, but it certainly limits Richard Allen in terms of the potential for appellate process. The Indiana Supreme Court denied Allen's other requests to remove Judge Gull from the case and to speed up the trial process. But the one victory may be meaningful for Allen's case. I'm wondering if it is a small win for Richard Allen because he's worked with these two attorneys from day one, so they've had years of preparation. Absolutely. I think, I think it's a huge win for Richard Allen. Um, he's comfortable with these attorneys. Now, perhaps his perspective is off. He, he may just want them because he's worked with them for so long. Um, and objectively, they may not be the best attorneys for uh, this murder case. Um, but again, he has a right to the attorneys of his choosing. And, and this is these are the attorneys he wants, and, and that's what he's going to get. With Baldwin and Rosie back on the case, there's already work to be done. On the same day the state Supreme Court made this ruling, Carroll County prosecutors recommended additional charges against Allen. Initially, Richard Allen was charged with two counts of what's called felony murder. That means that during the course of, in this case, the kidnapping of the two young girls, uh, they were both killed or murdered during that process. They went back to the court and now they're asking to add additional charges. Uh, two counts of murder, instead of what, what we saw as the felony murder, now it's the intentional or knowing murder of these two young girls, and then two additional counts of ki of kidnapping. Um, that would be the underlying charge for the initial two counts of murder that were already charged. So we know the original one was the felony murder counts, those two, and now there's the additional two of murder, two kidnapping. Does that mean there's a total of four murder charges? Exactly. And I think people sometimes get confused because they're like, well, how are there four murder charges if there's only two victims? Um, simply put, the prosecution has a right to have multiple theories of a case. Uh, and in this case, the theories are intentional or knowing that he intentionally murdered these two young girls. And the second is um, the felony murder where the prosecution doesn't need to even prove that he intended to or knowingly kill them, just that during the course of a kidnapping, the two young girls were killed. Rendleman says these additional charges were likely added to benefit the state's case. 
It kind of sounds like a catch-all to me for the prosecution, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like they want to have all of their bases covered in an effort to get a conviction in, for Richard Allen. When the prosecution goes into a trial, they want to cover all their bases. And by including the murder counts for intentional, the murder counts for felony murder, and the underlying kidnapping, it really protects them. Um, and it'll eventually allow the jury to consider any and all charges to decide what, if any, are appropriate in terms of what they've proven beyond a reasonable doubt. The charges haven't officially been added, but according to Rendleman, it's likely. The judge will have to make the ultimate decision as to whether or not to add those charges, and it will be based on whether or not the facts that had been initially presented are supported by the new charges. It seems like they are, so it seems like the judge will in fact allow that to happen. One of the things the defense could argue is that it prejudices them because they weren't aware of these new charges. But the argument on the part of the prosecution is, well, you saw all the facts and you knew that it made out the specific charges, so you've been on notice since the beginning that these charges were potentially coming down the line. Right now, Allen's trial date is scheduled for this fall. Rendleman says that date may stick. Keep in mind that Richard Allen asked for a much shorter date for trial, and he, he was unsuccessful um, in that request. Uh, is October reasonable? I, I don't think it's unreasonable. Keep in mind, he has now the attorneys he had before who are well informed on on the case and have have probably reviewed much if not most of the discovery um so i'm not sure october is an unreasonable date to have an expectation of trial and so far richard allen himself has been somewhat outspoken i mean he hasn't performed any interviews or anything like that but yesterday an entire letter written by him was read in the supreme court hearing we've seen other letters things like that so we know that he's somewhat vocal is it possible that he would want to take the stand in his own defense? That, that's such a great question without an easy answer. And, you know, I, I think any time you have, particularly a murder case, um, a defense attorney is going to turn to their client and say, wait, let's just see how the evidence unfolds. Because sometimes a defendant will be ready to testify from the start and realize that testifying may actually hurt them if the case hasn't gone in as strong as the prosecution would have liked. So I think it's a guessing game right now. He may be inclined at this moment to testify, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to. Even if Allen doesn't testify, Rendleman expects the defense to put up a fight when the case does go to trial. Remember, most of what we're talking about is, is really circumstantial evidence. Um, there's no witnesses who actually can say Richard Allen is the person that I saw abduct these two young girls um, and kill them. Um, and so the prosecution really is going to be relying on a lot of different little pieces uh, from his car to the witnesses that, that can't necessarily ID him, but can identify someone that looked like him, uh, to his own statements, um, to, in a sense, let the jury know there really is no one else that could have committed this crime. And so in a sense, it's almost ruling everybody else out for the jury to get to him. So I, I think the defense does have a lot to work with. And I think we also don't know everything yet. I, I still think there are pieces of this case that the prosecution has kept close to the vest. And I'm interested to see what, what more we're gonna learn as the trial gets closer. Right now, Allen's trial is slated to begin on October 15th and last nearly three weeks. Reporting for Long Crime, I'm Sierra Gillespie.